So one of my favorite backgrounds for a painted rock is an ombre, which is this faded color from one kind of continuously fading into another. Here I did the pink and purple range. Here's a bright red kind of coral. They're great for every kind of background. I mean, you could make this into some kind of sunrise sunset scene or just add something very simple, like a word, to something like this. And it just spices up that design a lot. So I thought I'd update my tutorial on this technique um, using some very simple, affordable, accessible supplies. Part of the reason I love this is it's you don't have to be very talented to achieve a very good result. So here's what you need to start. You need a couple colors of a matte acrylic. I like this Deco Art brand, which comes in a couple varieties. The Americana is their higher end part of the line. I don't know, this was $2.19, so affordable still. Um, and this is their lower end, which is like 99 cents at most craft stores. And I don't find one to be necessarily better than the other. It varies more color to color than from price point to price point. Um, but I do like this because it's a real matte, chalky finish, which works really well for a base coat and is really necessary to make this particular effect. So I have those two colors. The only other tools you need are just any old paintbrush. It can be grungy and not very fancy. And then you need some of these little makeup sponges. I guess they're a latex sponge. You get them at a dollar store or Target, somewhere like that. They come in packs like this for a buck, couple bucks, depending on where you get it. Nothing brand related is important. They all work great. And the basic idea is here, you're gonna take the paint colors you've selected. Here's my kind of green, aqua green, and here's my yellow. And then I've blended the two to make an intermediate color, okay? I have a rock that's base coated in the darker color. Now, whether you base coat a darker light color has more to do, this was because I had this on hand, but <laughs> um, it has more to do really with the coverage of the paint that you're applying. And as you practice this, you'll see that some colors, reds in particular, um, can be really tricky and they take so many layers. They're not great for this, um, but you'll find that through trial and error, you'll pick some favorite colors that work nicely. This yellow is actually a newer one to me, but I'm loving how it turns out. So let me show you how to start. Basically, what you're gonna do is use the rectangular end of the makeup sponge as the palette to create this ombre effect. So I'm gonna add yellow just by dipping one side in. I think I want a little more than that, like so. And then I want the darker color on the other side. Then I'm gonna grab my paintbrush and scoop up some of the intermediate and lay it right down in between the two. Okay, So you can already see the kind of fade of colors happening there. And now all we have to do is blend it a little bit, which you just do by pouncing it very gently at first. So you're not mixing the gloppy paint that you just applied too much. You go very carefully. And then once you've taken most of it off, you're gonna move a little bit more quickly. Move this out of my way. And you can see as you go that those colors are blending. And now you have a more blended palette. I also am seeing the green migrating into my yellow, which is typical. So I'm gonna go back, brighten that end up with some more new yellow. Pick a clean place on my paper plate. My favorite palette for this is a paper plate because you can just dispose of your, your, your mixing palette when you're done. Okay, so essentially that's what we're going for. I'd like to see this a little more blended. So I'm going to go back in and add a, just a little bit more paint. And this time when I pounce, I'm gonna move back and forth just a little bit. The reason being, as I move my sponge back and forth, those colors are gonna blend and shift around a little bit. I don't wanna do it too much and muddy out the yellow and to lose that color, but just enough to kind of get this green and yellow to blend a little better. So that looks like this. Kind of back and forth, just real little pounces. And there we go, we get a little bit better blending again 
touch up with the yellow to keep it bright if you see that green kind of traveling and there we go okay so we've got a really blended sponge now you just hold your rock and kind of think about how you want to orient your colors so for me I want the yellow to be on this side the dark green on this side and the in between right down the middle so here we go just like I always say it's like the waistband of the rock you're going all the way around that middle section just pouncing real quickly up and down you can get a little paint splatter on this so you might want to have a paper down or something behind you you just flip it around and keep going all the way around that center line now the interesting thing as you work this the kind of less paint you have the better you don't want a bunch of gloppy paint dripping all over the place you want it fairly dry and actually as your paint dries out a little bit and gets a little tacky it works better it covers better it blends better so the fact that I've got this kind of drying in the background is good for me and little puddles of paint work better because of that you don't want to have a giant lake that won't get tacky enough to kind of grab so you can see I've got all the way around one time and if you look closely you're gonna see that there's still a little texture in there I'm gonna take care of that on my next step so the other thing you want to have set up is a piece of something with plastic I just use an old ziplock and cut it open lay it down and the reason for that is you're going all the way around this rock but now you need to let it dry so if you put it on just a paper plate that's gonna stick to your paint and either take your paint off or you're gonna have paper on your rock um, so I like something just plastic it may leave a shiny spot at one place in your paint as it dries there but it won't remove your paint or leave something on your rock you don't want so at this point you should have a rock that looks like this after it's dry which this has you're gonna come back to it with that same um, sponge which is still damp with paint and just go right over that waistband again and this time you shouldn't have very much paint on your sponge it should be sort of drying out if you need to reload go for it but then try to pounce lots of it off and the reason for that is you want to be able to press kind of hard and you don't want paint dripping and gooping everywhere and as you go you can see the stickiness and dryness of my paint is allowing me to get a much better coverage on that yellow you can also kind of tip let's see if I can get it so you can see tip your sponge up so it's only contacting the yellow if you want to just you know add a little of paint there on the area that we're going to totally cover in yellow in a bit but not mess up the ombre that you're getting such a good effect on so once more just kind of blending blending turning that rock around going over it one more time so now you're seeing that we're getting a lot better coverage oops and you'll do that sometimes you can come back later and just touch that up okay so that's coat number two which should leave you looking like this after it's dried and you see you have much less of the kind of texture it's starting to really look um, much more even the next thing is to grab a new sponge I've already loaded this a little bit and we're just gonna use the plain yellow be careful you've got probably very painty hands now and the more you touch the wet stuff the more mistakes you're gonna be fixing later so now I'm just adding the solid yellow to the top where that gap was and you're just gonna to want to come right up and this is why you want that edge to be really bright yellow not some kind of teal or green because you want to come right up to it so that you don't even see where that line was but you're only gonna get if it's yellow touching yellow, right? You can see in some of the areas where my wasn't as precise, I'm gonna have to go back probably and blend that another time or two. But essentially, you're just gonna cover that top like this, okay? And it's not gonna be totally perfect on the first layer. You're gonna see through it a little bit. But once you've done that, and I've got one that's already dry, you're gonna keep going over it with that almost dry sponge only yellow paint on there coming right up to the line see how I'm getting kind of a bright yellow line the more I do this that's just gonna disappear 
Okay, usually the yellows are hard to get good coverage with, so you can see that I'd probably go over this one more time. Um, and I might even come back with this one more time. Once this yellow is really solid, go all the way around one more time, just really making sure this is blended. Okay, so I've essentially finished uh, this batch of rocks. I wanted to show you just a little bit about touching up and finishing the yellow section. Um, so first of all, feel free to cut these up. Sometimes you need a little smaller piece and also I find that although you can rinse them out and use them again, the water kind of changes the consistency. So when I'm done, if I want to use that sponge again, I often just snip the part that has paint off and then tuck the little piece back in my kit. So I have one here with just a tiny little bit of yellow um, and my yellow is nice and tacky. Um, so just a little bit's gonna do. And you can see this is looking pretty good, but there's a couple of places where I have the green still showing through. So I'm just gonna take this and once again, go over those areas. And when you're doing this, you're down to so little paint at this point when it's really tacky that you're pressing pretty hard to get the paint out of the sponge. So you really want to make sure you're in the yellow only or you'll get hard lines again, which you don't want. But if you really push, you get that nice sticky, tacky paint out and you can see how much better it covers um, than the wet stuff. All the way around. And then I have another, um, carefully holding this not to mess up, another one loaded up just with the ombre again. And I just want to go back over just to make sure that all my paint is really covering well. And you can see there's a little bit of stripiness. I'm trying to get rid of that and just make sure that the blend looks really even. And there we go, looks pretty good. So there's still one or two little spots. I'll go back with the yellow sponge and touch up, but that's basically it. Setting that buddy down to dry. And we have some really nice ombre backgrounds. These would be great for ocean scenes, or yeah, I love to use them as skies and water in nature scenes, but really you could do lettering calligraphy over these and they would look lovely. Hopefully you like that technique. Thanks for watching.